Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm so excited about today's tutorial. I have had an overwhelming response to the placemat project, so I decided to give you one more. I don't have any more planned at this time, but we'll see what happens. But so far we've made the zipper pouch, the box pouch, we've made the wallet, we've made the square zip pouch, and now we're going to make the, this could be a lunch pouch, it could be a makeup bag, whatever you want it to be. You can make the handles long like this or short like this one. And in this one, I've given you in the tutorial an option where I have put the vinyl lining in this. So this can be easily wiped out, cleaned out in case you want to use it for a lunch patch, a lunch pouch, or even a makeup bag. So let's jump into the tutorial and let's get started. So here are the items we need to start this project. First of all, you're going to need your quilted placemat. You're going to need a piece of fabric cut to four by 16, and it will be a coordinating fabric. This will be the handle of the bag when you're finished. I have folded it in half and then opened it and pressed the outer edges to the center. You're going to need a piece of interfacing cut to four by 14. This is the heat and bond Fusible interfacing is the craft extra firm. So make sure you get the extra firm. And again, that is cut to four by 14. And then we're going to use a piece of heat and bond iron on vinyl. The vinyl is going to be cut to 12 by 17, which is slightly smaller than your placemat. And then you're going to need a zipper that is as long as the short end of your placemat or longer. So the first thing we're going to do is apply the iron-on vinyl to the back of our placemat. This is going to provide a surface that is wipeable. So if you want to use this for a makeup bag or a lunch tote, you're going to be able to wipe the inside of this out. And again, I just cut a piece to 12 by 17. You're going to peel off the paper backing, which will reveal a sort of st slightly sticky side. You're going to put that sticky side down on the placemat. And I'm just centering it here. Again, I cut this slightly smaller and I did that on purpose so that I'm not sewing through the vinyl. And then I'm going to put that liner piece on top of it, back on top of it. That's the same piece that I peeled off. And then you're going to use your iron with no steam on top of the backing. And it takes about eight seconds or so and you just want to press the entire area. Now, unfortunately, my camera shut down and I didn't realize it when I peeled this off, but this will leave a shiny, wipeable liner on the inside of the placemat, and I'll put a picture in here so that you can see what the end product looks like. Next, we're going to prep our handles. Now we have our piece of interfacing that is cut to four by 14, and our piece of fabric is cut to four by 16, We've folded it in half and then pressed the edges into, fold it in half like this, press the edges into the center and press again. Now we're going to open it up and place that interfacing shiny side down right in the center so that you're leaving both of the edges bare. We're going to close it back up and go ahead and steam press that into place. This is going to allow us to have the ends where we can sew through them without having to sew through that heavy interfacing. And then we're going to fold this in half again, and that's going to form your handle. Next, you want to take this to your sewing machine and sew down that open edge, and then sew down the opposite edge. Just one straight stitch, don't have to worry about the ends. And here's what your handle will look like once you have stitched down both sides. Now it's time to add our zipper to our placemat. You're going to put your zipper face up, the pull side of the zipper face up, and put your Place mat on top of the zipper. I found that this Wonder Tape, I'll have all these products linked below the video in the description by the way, but I found this Wonder Tape really helps with the place mats and adding the zippers just because they can be a little bit hard to clip into place and keep everything where you want it. This is a sewable double-sided tape and it washes away. If you wash this, it will wash itself away. But 
you can't see it and it will hold that zipper in place without the needs of clips or pins. Now, if you don't have the wonder tape, you can absolutely clip or pin whatever works for you. But I found this really works well for specifically the placemats and the zipper. Again, it's just a double-sided tape. You put it down and peel off the backing and then place your placemat right in place. And what I like about this tape is that it gives you the opportunity. I can still lift this up and reposition it if I see that the placemat isn't lined up with the zipper exactly the way I want it. So once you have it lined up and taped or clipped or pinned into place, take it over to your sewing machine and you're going to sew right in the center of that binding strip at the edge of the, the placemat and sew your zipper into place. And here you can see I have sewn one side of the zipper into place. Again, I'm going to use the wonder tape and this is where it really shines because the other side of the zipper is a little bit harder to attach just because of the way we're attaching the zipper to the top of the zipper instead of the normal way you would do it. So I really like using this tape to keep everything in place. I don't have to worry about pinning it and making sure that it all lines up. I can simply add this tape, peel off the backing and put the placemat right into place just the way I want it. So you're going to fold it up and then fold the top of the placemat down. Make sure you line it up with the other side. And then you're going to, again, top stitch. You'll need to unzip the zipper in order to top stitch. And this is, again, why I like the tape because it's staying into place. I don't have to worry about pinning it. So take that over to your sewing machine and go ahead and top stitch right along that binding. So we're going to fold the placemat flat and measure two and a half inches up from the top edge of the zipper or the bottom of the edge of the placemat. Two and a half inches up and make a mark. I'm using the friction pens which are erasable with an iron and we're going to align our handle and you can make your handles longer or shorter. I actually like the shorter handles than the longer ones. You're going to clip that right on top of that line. And then you're going to lift up the slack and clip the other end right on your center line. Now you can, when you draw that line, you don't have to go all the way across. I did just for the sake of lining things up. But go ahead and use your iron and erase that line because we're going to be stitching part of this handle down and it's easier to erase it right now. But make sure you have that pinned into place and secure so it doesn't move. Now you're going to measure from the edge of the placemat three inches in on your handle and make a mark. And do the same thing on the other end. Three inches in and make a mark. And you want that mark to be vertically straight up and down and make sure it's centered on the handle, you're going to be stitching that into place. So I'm just making sure that the handle is straight and it is on that center mark. And I'm just marking my stitch lines. Okay, now you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and for right now, you're just going to lightly stitch on the, the very edge, the handle into place. You don't want to, you don't need to back stitch or anything else, just lightly stitch it into place and then move in on your three inch mark and stitch stitch the other side, make sure your handle is flat, and stitch the other three inch mark. And make sure when you're stitching it, you're only stitching through the one side of the placemat. You don't want to stitch the back to it. Make sure you don't want to do that. You just want to stitch on the top part of the placemat. You're just stitching that handle down on one layer of the placemat. And here you can see what my handle looks like. You have your stitches right there. And I did back stitch on the three inch marks. And then I just stitched one single stitch right on the edge. I'm going to go ahead and iron and remove all of my ink marks. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. We're going to turn our placemat. You should have like a little tube right now. You're going to turn it wrong side out so that you're looking at the inside of the placemat. Flip it right, wrong side out. And once you have it wrong side out, we're going to start clipping this into place. What you want to do is look up where the handle is and fold that handle directly in half. So the handle is right there. I folded it in half and I'm going to clip. 
I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite end. Find the handle, fold it directly in half, and clip. Now that's going to establish the center point. Now continue pinning the placemat into place on the two open ends and the top and the bottom. Make sure you unzip your zipper at least three quarters of the way to halfway. It doesn't have to be all of the way undone, but you want it far enough that you're going to be able to turn everything right side out. When you open it up, you're going to have your open tails on your zipper. I find it easiest to just clip those together to keep them together so when I sew the seam it will uh, keep the zipper in place. So go ahead and pin the rest and then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and sew right down that stitch line that is already there on the binding or just inside. I prefer to sew just inside of it but th that's up to you. Make sure when you go across the zipper that you backstitch on both ends. And here's what my pouch looks like at this point. You can see I backstitched across the zippers. I'm going to cut off the tails of the zipper and now it's time to box our corners. Now when you open up the top of the zipper you can see where your handle is. That is your center point. So what you want to do is fold it down on itself like this and make sure that that seam on the top is going right across that center. Now I have a template that I have created that's two and a half by two and a half by three and a half. Now, if you don't want to use a template, you can just mark down two and a half inches on each side and make a mark like this and two and a half inches on that side and make a mark and then connect those lines. But I prefer just using the template. I think it's easier. And all I do is put the template on top. Again, I'm making sure that it is centered. That seam is centered with the center of the handle. I'm opening up that seam at the bottom and then I'm just going to clip that into place and take it over to my sewing machine and sew a straight line right across the bottom of the triangle. And then I'm going to turn it over, unzip the zipper, and do the exact same thing to the other side on the top. So I'm going to sew those and I'll be right back. Once you've sewn your two corners it should be looking something like this. You can see I've stitched across both of those edges. Now we're going to do the bottom edges. Now I find it easiest to crease the bottom so that I can see where that center point is to make sure everything is lined up. You need to make sure you make those seams right in the corner and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to push that corner out, flatten it, use our template or measure whichever method you want to use. And again, I'm looking to see where my center point is, making sure that seam's going right down the center going to clip that into place and stitch it and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Once you have all of those corners sewn, you're going to take it over to your cutting surface and cut the edges off on the outside of the seam, leaving about a quarter inch. And then if you don't have a serger, run a zigzag stitch on that outer edge outside of the seam. And again, you're going to want to serge or run a zigzag stitch right on the outer part of that seam just to finish it off and make it look a little more finished and those raw edges won't be sticking out like that, which could start to fray after a while. So go ahead and turn your bag right side out. And you've just completed the third version of the placemat pouch. I prefer to take it to the iron and iron each one of the corners just to give it that really boxy look. I think it really makes it look a little more finished and a lot more professional. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I'm having so much fun with these placemat projects and getting an overwhelming response to them. And for that, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.